Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon to everyone. My name is Fatima and I'm your MC for today. Okay, before we start the webinar, I would like to read some of the house rules. Uh, written question can be asked via key in the question box in the webinar application and comment box in the Facebook. Similar question with clustered together and prioritized to answer. Copy of the webinar slide will be shared at our portal www.wayup.my slash agrofood after the webinar session. Feedback or suggestion on the webinar are most welcome and you can email to afpn at ntc.gov.my. To start the session, I would like to in introduce our moderator for today. Yang berbahagia Datuk, uh, Arkitek Izumi Harzani Ismail, Champion of Agrofood Productivity Nexus. He is also the President of Malaysian Institute of Architects and a member of the Technical Working Group on dealing with construction permits formed under Pemuda. He is one of the director at Architect MAA Serenberhai, one of the largest architecture practices and a winner of various awards, including PAM Architecture Award, CNBC Asia Pacific Property Award, MIP Excellent in Planning Awards, and BCI Asia Top 10 Architects Award. He graduated with a bachelor degree in housing, uh, building and planning and bachelor of architecture from University of Science Malaysia and master of philosophy policy studies from University of Technology Malaysia. Without further ado, I would like to invite Datuk A.R. Izumi Ismail. So Datuk, the floor is yours. Okay, Assalamualaikum and good afternoon. Thank you Puan Fatima. Uh, my name is Izumi Hazani. Okay, I would like to say thank you to all the participants today and also uh, to our speaker for joining us uh, today. So, welcome to Agrofood Productivity um, Productive Webinar. The title for today's webinar is Digital Technology Improve Productivity Produce Quality Yield. Uh, this webinar is organized by Agrofood Productivity Nexus, in short, AFPN and uh, supported by Malaysian Productivity, Malaysia Productivity Corporation, MPC. AFPN is one of the nine nexus uh, productivity established under the Malaysian Productivity Blueprint in May 2017 to drive the productivity agenda and at the sectoral and enterprise level. Four key challenges have been identified in the blueprint. And one of the challenges is the low adoption of technology and modern farming techniques. As we know, uh, with the increasing advancement of technology and digitalization, the agro-food subsector is still lacked in adoption of modern farming techniques. Malaysia's investment in farming capital is significantly lower than its Asian neighbors. Technology adoption has been the key driver to boosting agro-food yield and profitability around the world. Thus, this webinar is in line with the initiative to address the issues. The webinar aims to boost awareness of the technological upgrades and modern farming techniques that agro food players can adopt. Learning from the expert on the importance technology and modern farming techniques to improve your productivity and produce quality yield. So that's the topic and this is what we are going to discuss today. We are very grateful and we are happy that uh, we have the CEO of Aerodyne Group to join us today as the speaker. Uh, so, um, Encik Kamaro Muhammad is uh, the founder and also CEO of Aerodyne Group. He is uh, also um, very, uh, I would say that very famous now uh, through all the social media and the expansion of the uh, the, the company. Uh, so welcome to this webinar, Cik Kamaru. Okay, let me further introduce. Okay, uh, Cik Kamaru is a founder and also CEO of Aerodyne Group, a Malaysian-based drone solutions provider that is ranked number one in the world by Drone Industry Insights of Germany. He is EY Entrepreneur of the Year 2020, EY Entrepreneur 
EY Technology Entrepreneur of the Year 2020 Malaysia, as well as SEBA Entrepreneur of the Year 2020. Congratulations, Jack Kamaru. And uh, Kamaru led Aerodyne from a three-person startup in 2014 to a global company with the presence of 35 countries in just six years. He was recently appointed as a board of, uh, as a member of the Economic Action Council. And I was told that he had a meeting, uh, EAC meeting this morning. And he is a TED speaker and a drone industry uh, top leader who has presented his ideas and innovation on artificial intelligence, drones and industry 4.0 around the world. And audit an auditor by training, Camaro spent his form formative years in the city of London before switching his career uh, to tech industry upon returning to Malaysia after 10 years stint in UK. Camaro is an avid explorer and has traveled to more than 100 countries both for business and pleasure. So, um, Mr. Kamaru, welcome to uh, this webinar today. And we really wish uh, to thank you uh, for your time and uh, knowledge sharing with us today. Uh, so I would like to invite you. Now you have um, the audience with you. So you may commence your presentation. Thank you, Dato. It, it's, uh, it's really is an honor for me to be here uh, today. Thank you, MPC, uh, for inviting me. Uh, I'm very excited to be sharing a little bit of uh, uh, in the limited uh, space and time that we have today uh, to be sharing a little bit about uh, technology in general and of course uh, how a drone in specific because Aerodyne is a drone company as well. So and then we will talk because I saw some some notes from the participant as well. Maybe in the next one should be about drone. So today I actually already will be talking quite a bit about drone as well. So of course, as it's uh, as the title say, uh, this is actually about digital technology in general, and how it will improve productivity and produce quality yield, right? And uh, this is very timely. Uh, to be honest, uh, Aerodyne is a new kid uh, in the block, so to speak. Uh, the, the company is seven years old, but we only just started uh, to uh, go into agriculture just one last year because of COVID nineteen. And, and what is exciting as well, the moment we started to go into agriculture, very quickly has already become one of the largest uh, division uh, within Aerodyne itself. And primarily because we have big problem statement that needs to be addressed. And this actually about yield, about, about productivity. Uh, and of course, if I may add another one as well, is uh, foreign labor issue uh, because of the, of the pandemic. So maybe that's uh, what... I will frame uh, my, my discussion this afternoon. So maybe to start with, I think it would probably be timely as well for me to uh, <clears throat> uh, talk a little bit about, about, about the, the company as well. So uh, yeah, so let's just, uh, uh, let, me, let me just start with that. Just give me a second. Right. Right, so um, yeah, so uh, uh, let me just go about, about the company, just, just to give uh, uh, you know, an, 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 uh, an overview of, of what we do and, and who we are and, and, and all that. So uh, yeah, we, we are here, our, our HQ is here based in, in Cyberjaya. I'm, I'm contacting this call from Cyberjaya, Malaysia Silicon Valley, so to speak. Right? So, 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 so on top of it is some of the exciting statistics. Um, in the past, we look after critical asset. Uh, management around the world. Uh, but I will explain after this that a lot of our work now is actually already in uh, agriculture. Uh, today we have presence in 35 countries, we have offices in 12. Uh, these are some of the uh, offices that we have uh, around the world. Uh, we are actually, this has not been updated. We have about 680 people now uh, within Aerodyne. And uh, Alhamdulillah, we are also ranked uh, first in the world in drone service provider. So what uh, everyone can see now on the screen is actually our uh, footprint. Uh, a little bit about what we do. Uh, we provide, when we talk about drone or technology, uh, it's, it's really about DTQ, we call it. Drone tech, data tech, and digital uh, transformation. So digital transformation is actually what we are talking about today. How do we deliver a solution that is faster, <clears throat> better, cheaper, and safer? So that, that's actually um, uh, the main objective on all of this. So one of the things that uh, we focus on, I mean, uh, what you see on the screen 
uh, actually the four solutions that we do, but I really would just focus on agriculture today. And then the rest, I will just talk a little bit just for, for background about uh, drone technology in general. So when we talk about uh, AgriMo, you know, or, or rather the, how, how drone can, uh, you know, contribute towards uh, agriculture. It's all about using integrated drones, uh, sensors, IoT devices and all that. And how do we bring all of this data together to give us the insights uh, to allow us to run our farming operation uh, more effectively? Again, uh, as the title say, how do we increase our yield? How we increase our, our effectiveness? It's about that. Right. So uh, on top of that, of course, we, we, we have other solutions. Uh, maybe just a little bit of a backgrounder. Uh, we also have a nested drone system, uh, which we will then also in the future apply uh, for agriculture as well. So imagine this in the in the future, maybe two years from now, you have a farm, you will actually install these drones on its own nest. And this nest is actually like a box. So if you have, uh, say, paddy plantation or durian plantation, the nest actually stays in, uh, I mean, the drone stays in the nest, the nests are connected to the internet, so you can, uh, the nest will be connected to your supplies, whether it's fertilizer, whether it's pesticides, uh, or whatever is connected. So it will be like a robotic uh, operation in the future. So you do not need to go to site to operate. You can uh, operate your drone, your system from the comfort of your living room, uh, in, in whether in the kampung, in the villages where you're operating, or the farm where you're operating, or it could be from anywhere in the world. I mean, that, that's, that's what Project uh, Fakram is all about. So, but the rest, I'll, I'll just uh, skip for now as, as we go into the agriculture side. Now, uh, as far as agriculture, as I mentioned earlier, um, today, uh, we just started just slightly over one year. Uh, I will share about some of the um, uh, statistics as well. But one thing that is very exciting about using uh, technology uh, for agriculture is that we can expect almost immediate value creation. And this is already proven in our operations in Malaysia. We can immediately deploy uh, uh, our, our drones as well to the site. So let's just take a look at some of the uh, uh, portfolio or rather the track record that we have done so far. Again, this is just a background before we go into the technology itself. Uh, you can see on the map uh, where we are operating uh, today, uh, just after uh, starting uh, uh, just, just about one year ago. So we are in Kelantan, we are in Terengganu, Pera, uh, uh, Barat Laut Selangor, uh, Negeri Sembilan, Melaka, Johor, and uh, now actually we haven't updated. We have also started in both uh, Sabah and Sarawak as well. So we would be very excited to work with the farmers out there uh, to help you uh, be more efficient. If you have a labor issue, we can, we can help that uh, address those, uh, those challenges immediately. Uh, so to date, um, up to today, we, we have uh, total hectares that we have worked on is almost 30,000 hectares. Uh, already, but of course, the the, the opportunities or rather the the, uh, the market itself is a whole lot bigger than that as well. So why why do we actually even want to use technology? So if I were to just look at uh, um, the um, drone industry uh, or rather the, the 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 use case or the value out of this, you know, I, I mentioned earlier as well, it's about producing faster, better, cheaper. You know as well. So immediately we have already seen uh, fifty percent in crop year. You know, uh, I, I just take about paddy for example right now. You know, uh, we, we are already uh, running a project where we call project uh, project ten, <laughs> uh, increasing it to ten ton. You know, when uh, previously uh, people were producing around four ton uh, per, per harvest or per season. So we are trying to push this to ten, then to twelve, and to fifteen and sixteen. This is also possible. Uh, within technical uh, possibility to do that. So another advantage is also today we are facing a lot of labor issue as well. So with mechanization, we can also help address those challenge. Now labor issue, especially if we uh, were to use the foreign labor, it's not just the shortage of uh, foreign labor, but the, the fact of using foreign labor itself also uh, can be very challenging too, right? Uh, we, we uh, were made to understand uh, that there's also integrity issue uh, when we use foreign level, some social issue. There's also talk about uh, the, the uh, I mentioned about the integrity just now. You know, uh, uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you were to go to palm plantation, you will see that the trees that are next to the road, that's very visible. The trees are very healthy, but at the time you go to 
uh, very far away that you see the trees are not really uh, you know uh, as as healthy as the one so it's an integrity issue as well in terms of uh, applying fertilizers and all that back to paddy uh, using uh, manual spraying um, you would also that you know incur that risk of spreading diseases uh, 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 around the field itself so looking at this you know we are even looking at uh, holistically how we can even expect up to five times cost savings you know, uh, and, and of course, using uh, all these various new technology, we can also uh, look at reducing carbon footprint, which is also a very big uh, uh, issue right now for the industry. Uh, one of the conversations that we had uh, uh, just earlier this morning is actually how some uh, European countries are imposing and during, and during the COP26 recently, will be introducing uh, additional tax if we do not uh, use uh, sustainable uh, uh, farming practice. So what is the impact of that? Then we might have problem even, uh, uh, you know, uh, exporting this to Europe and all that because, because of the tax, then we no longer become uh, competitive. So that, that is the kind of uh, uh, benefit that we can, we can get. Uh, in terms of pesticide, we can also, through targeted application, we can also look at uh, reducing uh, the usage by 10% so far. You know, so this is some of the uh, value that we can get uh, by using this. So again, this is uh, some of the uh, uh, statistics. You know, I mentioned about twenty-seven thousand hectares. We we have done more than uh, two two point seven million uh, palm tree count. It's still a very small numbers, but uh, uh, I'm excited because we just started less than a year ago, and the market has been responding very very fast. Uh, durian is also another uh, another very important. Uh, uh, use case. Uh, we are also already, the, the farmers are very excited, uh, uh, you know, that when, you, when we uh, apply the pesticides from the top, it's far more effective than uh, spraying it from the bottom. So that's why we are, we are getting a lot of requests now for doing uh, 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 durian. So today we have about 160 crew or, or rather pilots uh, managing it. So this is just to give a little bit of a uh, 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 filler or, or you know how drone has already uh, been able to uh, impact the agriculture and to be honest with these numbers I would say that this is perhaps less than five percent or maybe even lower of the uh, possibility on how this technology can impact uh, farmers uh, uh, around, around Malaysia uh, specifically right but however uh, it does it, it is not limited to just drones which is the UAP that's there's all kind of things that we need to be looking at in terms of uh, technology enabler for agriculture 4.0. So uh, you can also use uh, UGV for, for basically unmanned ground vehicle uh, to do things like even spraying as well. We can do things for harvesting, uh, for logistics, so on and so forth. So mechanization, uh, we will, uh, you know, various mechanization and sensors. IoT sensors, uh, laser application, and all that. Uh, what, how, how about using IoT? You know, we, you know, we want to go into a smart farming system so that we can look at the soil, nutrient. You can have real time, real time information, right? So all of these, uh, as part of uh, the, the technology adoption, imagine in the future. And in fact, this is what uh, we are looking at. You know, right now uh, we have foreign labor issue. What we are trying to do now, uh, at least, also uh, enabling. Uh, the youngsters, like perhaps quite a few of you uh, in, in here, is that um, go back, you, you are in the city, what if you can go back and operate this technology uh, in your rural area and earn more than what you could earn in the city? So we want to, to promote this reverse migration. Go back to the rural area, use modern farming techniques, you can be potentially be a lot more profitable as well and make you know, better value of, of, of your time in this region and, and we are very excited we do feel that this is something that can that can be achieved now let, let's go back to the uh, precision agriculture itself what, what does it mean uh, this is how, how do we use technology to gain uh, these insights so if you look at the the, the, the box the, the the big box that you can see over here right the, in terms of traditional agriculture you know we, we always work on large uh, you know uh, condition estimation you know we, we do not have information based on a single tree it, it could be a uh, uh, pineapple for example i mean you do not have data of a single 
uh, plan or single tree, right? You have information based on a very large area, you know, and, and then whatever input or decision that you make would always be on a very large area, right? So what happened, what, what is the problem with that? So then you, you uh, unfortunately, you will use, uh, you will be subjected to inefficient use of your seed, your fertilizer, your chemical input, and so on and so forth. And it's difficult also for you to uh, identify, uh, you know, land information, you know, how, how, how arid or how infertile the land is and so on and so forth, right? So the idea behind using all of this technology, and it's not just limited to drone, there's also sensors, there's also IoT and all that, it's about giving you, uh, the farmers, the ability to zoom in into specific areas and you can do it, uh, you know, you can do your intervention, you can do your activities based on what uh, individual trees or individual small area would need. So this will lead to efficient use of fertilizers, seed, chemicals, and so on and so forth. So what can we expect out of this? Productivity increase, lowering unit costs, you know, um, easier for us to make a decision because all of these are digitally uh, enabled, all of these are digitally connected. So that, that's actually uh, how drones and IoT uh, help towards uh, precision uh, agriculture. Now, um, on top of that, we can also use uh, uh, remote sensing uh, techniques to obtain very, very deep uh, farm insights. You know, looking at the health of the crop, uh, how stressed it is, whether it is infected, you know, you can do water analysis. I mean, something that in the past, you do not have this kind of information. You don't have this kind of data uh, in real time. Now you can have it in near real time. Uh, or, or if you combine this with IoT, you can have real time data as well for you to run your farming uh, operation. Yeah? So that's, uh, that's uh, another one as well. So let's look at another aspect of this, you know, which is imagine a time in the near future where the whole of your farm operations are digitized. You know, uh, it, it can start uh, in the beginning just by understanding your assets, understanding your land. You know your water points. You know how how do you know the, the conditions of the of, of the soil and all that, right? Then you go to digital too. You can be looking at your weed requirement. How how do we optimize your your sowing? You know how how do you know you know your your weed spray, spraying and all that? You go to digital tree. You can identify stress. You can identify uh, how do you then uh, apply your fertilizers. Then we can also look at um, uh, better operation. You can look at the the harvesting itself. And then, uh, of course, at the most advanced level, we can also be looking at how do we do our own overall planning too, you know. And then this is what this 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 uh, this uh, webinar is all about. How do we then help increase and maintain yield uh, also for subsequent season, for current season, producing the maximum the maximum that we can do, and also make sure that we also have the uh, sustainability uh, to move forward in our subsequent uh, season as well. Right, so that's uh, uh, basically a, a high-level um, introduction about how drone can really uh, drone and other various technology can uh, sort of uh, add value uh, to uh, farming operation. So uh, over to you, uh, Dato. That, that's my introduction. And maybe after this, we can have a more engaging uh, session uh, with Thank yourself you. and perhaps with the audience as well. <laughs> Thank you very much, okay, Mr. Camaro. Okay, so I think it's a very good uh, sharing. Yeah, of course, we have a lot of questions that we receive from the participant. I think uh, maybe um, we, um, I would like to advise all the participants if you have any question to ask uh, Encik Camaro, you can type in the QA. I can see there's a few questions there. Okay, so maybe I will start uh, with the first question that we received uh, earlier. Okay, yeah. so. The first question is that how do you apply technology yet uh, keep the cost effective uh, for the farmers? So mm -hmm. maybe Jake Camaro can explain that how eventually in future this technology application actually is affordable uh, for the farmers. Thank you. I, I think this is a very valid question. <laughs> uh, at the moment, in fact, this is one of the reasons why adoption is very low. You know, uh, cost is prohibitive. Uh, some people will think, oh, you know, I need to invest. So some of the ideas that has been thrown around is that um, maybe we can aggregate our farming. We can we can be doing some kind of a sharing as well, you know, or use a service provider like us, for example, you know, where you do not need to invest. You, know, you yep. use the service to, to, to do this, right? So so that that's uh, in terms of cost. 
I think I think another factor that impacting cost is also the economies of scale. So when the adoption is 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 uh, low, then the unit uh, cost would be, or, you know, the unit rate would be quite high as well. So I yeah. think as we push uh, for greater adoption, uh, we can see that the unit cost over time will, uh, you know, drop significantly. Uh, so there, there are also companies uh, like us, for example, where we are willing to take uh, uh, the 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 the, 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 the chance or the risk. By even say, hey, do we at a cost now because we want to promote the adoption. So, yes. so right now, what we are doing is that we are not really focused on making profit. We are focused on, you know, educating the market, uh, get people mm-hmm. to understand the value of this uh, solution. Uh, we we also do POC for free, for example, so that people the the buy in is is there. But yeah. in the long run, if we have the economies of scale, then the cost uh, will drop. Uh, significantly. So I, I guess my, my answer uh, to how we can promote adoption and reduce the cost is by, by volume. Uh, and perhaps maybe uh, the government uh, can play a role as well. You know, I mean, we, are, we, are, we are pushing so hard for my digital, for digital economy. Uh, I mean, Malaysia is, is supporting the current ag- agriculture in Malaysia is very highly regulated. There's a lot of uh, assistance that the government is giving as well right now. And I'm very impressed with the commitment uh, that the government is doing uh, to, to, to address this issue. Perhaps we can even expect in the, in the near future some assistance when it comes to adoption of technology. That will help the, the uh, uh, greater adoptions as well. That, that's, that's my take on the yeah. Uh, thank you. But even uh, what you mentioned earlier, you say that using this uh, technology, adoption of this technology can also improve the yield. So that maybe there's investment in terms of the cost for the ad- adopting uh, this uh, technology. But at the end, the end result that you probably increase by 50%. So that will also be uh, on the win and win basis. On So that um, it's not just venturing into technology but also improve your productivity. Right, right. And, um, yeah, so, and then uh, like uh, what you mentioned uh, just now that uh, we maybe uh, we expect that there's some uh, system from the government uh, as well, especially in encourage, encouraging the adoption of technology. Uh, what, uh, how do you see that uh, in terms of uh, regulatory restriction uh, at the moment. So is there any area that we can improve so that uh, making adoption of technology will be easier, flying drone will be easier? There's two sides of a coin here, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, today, uh, flying drones is of course highly, highly regulated because that, and, and very understandable too. And, and I can relate to this very well because we operate in, 35, uh, in 34 other countries as well. Some are more relaxed than the other. Some don't even have a rule. Some are stricter than Malaysia. So, so uh, it is very much understandable that uh, for the country to have this uh, strict uh, control or regulation when it comes to using drone. In fact, I myself have seen how it is being operated uh, by people who don't uh, you know, appreciate you know, I, I, a couple of months ago, I, I was in Kedah and I saw people were flying drones right next to the airport, which is extremely, extremely dangerous, for yeah. example. So, so that's why it is actually very, very important that this technology is regulated. Now, the good news is the, the government and the, uh, the, uh, uh, the agency that is responsible for this is also very, very responsive. You know, and, and I'm very excited about this. In, in the past, perhaps not so. But right now, uh, when it comes to uh, regulating drones, it's under the purview of Civil Aviation Authority of Malaysia. I am, uh, as, as, as an industry player, I'm very, very impressed uh, with how the Civil of, uh, Aviation Authority of Malaysia is addressing this thing. You know, uh, uh, the, 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 uh, the agency is now very, uh, 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 I would say, receptive to technology. They see how this can help the economy. So, so they are trying to make it very, very easy. I think you just need to be patient a little bit while uh, they are about to uh, to announce the process. It, right now, we already have a process as well, but soon they are going to work uh, to help legalize all of these drone operations by yeah. certifying them. You know, and and uh, we are we are deeply involved in this as well. So, I'm I'm looking forward to to this to be. Uh, uh, you know, uh, address in the, the most positive way possible as well uh, in the near terms, and it is already happening. Yeah. So good news to all of you, uh, you know, drone operators and players out there. 
and and uh, I I think this is also good news for Malaysia. I think you have answered some of the question here because one of the questions said that is there any certification qualification required for drone operators? I think you just mentioned it, but there is another. I, I go a little bit more detail on that one, then. Okay, there is right. another so part I, related related to that as well. I would like to combine this question right. because that one is about the certification and qualification of the the operator. The other one is that is there any I, ISO or Malaysian standard mm -hmm. on drone usage? operation in agriculture sector in Malaysia. Right. So you can answer both. Yeah. Sure. So let, let me let me go on the on the ISO first, right? Yeah. Um, for example, as, as a so the, the the simple answer is there is none yet at the moment. Uh, there, there's no ISO or, or standards that are applicable for uh, for drone at the moment. Uh, but as an organization, for example like Aerodyne, uh, yeah. We have we have uh, basically all the main four ISO certification. That is actually our enabler as well. So we, we run this in, in uh, for example, we have, we have uh, our quality ISO, we have environmental ISO, we have uh, uh, safety ISO, we have uh, data security ISO. So the, the 9,001, uh, 14,001, 18,001, and 24,001, for example, right? So, so all of this is actually about building the framework on how to operate safely. So uh, at the same time, we also engage uh, with uh, uh, various uh, standard organization as well uh, that will inevitably at some time in the future, will come up with the standards for drone operations, for farming, for oil and gas or whatever as well. At the moment, because this is still at early stage uh, of, of the adoption, I, I think the main uh, consideration that we really need to be looking at the moment is how do we operate this safely? We are, remember, because we are sharing the airspace, right? We, we, are, we are sharing the, the airspace with helicopters, aircraft. So we need to be very responsible when we operate these drones, right? Uh, we do not want to uh, be uh, come in the harm's way of actual aircraft. We do not want to uh, inflict any uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, incident to humans. You know, it, this thing can be very, very dangerous. So anyway, so, so that, that's uh, on, on the... On the uh, standard side, um, it, I'm sure it, it will be coming. So as far as the uh, Civil Aviation uh, Authority is concerned, uh, soon uh, there will be uh, 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 APTO, uh, RPTO, Remote Pilot Training Organization that will be uh, announced, right? So in the future, you will be required uh, to obtain uh, this RPTO. Uh, this uh, 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 pilot uh, license, so to speak, uh, before you can operate. And that, that is also already coming. As well. And I think it's a very, very positive thing. Then, because we have all seen videos on how these drones are uh, operated in non-professional and in dangerous manner. You know, I always get calls from CAM, you know, do you know who this person are? When they saw a video of drone hitting a house or crashing, you know, oh, I'm sorry, I, I do not know everybody, <laughs> you know, but, but the idea here is that everyone is trying to put their hearts and mind together uh, to help the industry grow and uh, doing this by taking some risk, but calculated risk by putting system and processes in place so that everybody can uh, uh, run this operation safely. So that, that's the main uh, objective out of this. Okay, so I have another question here, okay, from the participant here, uh, Miss Shirley Lawrence, okay. Uh, first, uh, she apologized that, sorry, I write in Malay, I think it's a mixed Malay and English, I think it's okay. Okay, so our farm will start uh, Tanam Mulato about 160 acre. Tanam uh, apa? Our dairy farm, uh, farm cow feed, okay. Mm -hmm. Untuk penanaman mulato, adakah drone sesuai digunakan? Cara penjaga penjagaan penyiraman perlu dilakukan berapa kali sehari? So I'm not sure whether you are able to answer this or not. <laughs> well, I, I can I'm I can share some experience, for example. Uh, I wouldn't say. But, but before, before that, uh, before that, do you think that it is um, a practical to use drone for penyiraman for watering, or better than use yeah. the subsoil piping? Uh, it depends. It depends. If, if it is really uh, uh, water heavy requirement, then then I would say you need to do piping, right? Uh, so it, it it depends on that because at the moment the cost of battery is prohibitive. I mean, it's still very high, so the economies of scale is still not there, and the battery technology has not uh, really come uh, to to a level that is uh, you know positive for everyone. 
you know but, but it, it really depends so we, we really need to uh, to, to look uh, into this however in terms of whether it's suitable or not you'll be very surprised on how drones are being used for all kind of uh, problem statement <laughs> when it comes to agriculture use so maybe i can share something that is also quite exciting as well so we were involved in the project in australia uh, okay. uh, uh, in, in, in the uh, you know uh, cattle cattle farm <laughs> you know that 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 produced wagyu meat the wagyu meat that we that we all really like right yeah so, yeah. so yeah, so we, we develop a, 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 an indices or a, a system or a process that allow, or maybe I should explain the problem statement first. Right? Over the years in Australia, their, their cow, you know, their cattle getting smaller and smaller. And then these are very expensive uh, 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 cattle, right? And when they study, then, then they come to an understanding that uh, this problem happens because the cows are not eating well, all right? That, that was the first problem segment. Then they realized, okay, why are they not eating well? Then they realized this, this, this uh, cattle are also very, very selective, very fussy. They only eat certain type of grass and they do not like imported grass. Imported mean uh, not import as in foreign grass, alien grass, they call it, that actually spread uh, among them. So they, they couldn't find uh, the differentiator, which one is uh, alien grass or which one is the local species, right? By naked eye, it looks the same. This is over years of research. So they engage us, you know, how can Aerodyne do this? How can Aerodyne help? Again, I'm sharing this because to give you an idea that, you know, technology can help solve problems. This, is, this sounds like crazy, right? How, how can drone uh, solve, solve this problem? And we did, you know, it was a two year project. You know, we, we, we look at, we use uh, hyperspectral sensors, so we, we find a different signature between the uh, visual signature, at, uh, you know, at, at different various uh, uh, spectral band between the local uh, grass and the alien grass. And because of that, we are able to tell those farmers, hey, yeah, you, you have all of this grass here, which you cannot tell by your naked eye. So that's just to, to sort of inspire everyone that, yeah, you can do, you can use technology to solve uh, various uh, problems. So this is where actually uh, data collection is very important. So that okay, if, um, you can do data mapping through through this data uh, collection. Then you can do data ma mapping, and how probably you can see the movement of mm -hmm. uh, the the, uh, the cattle, uh, everything, so that you can make it uh, more efficient yeah. in producing uh, better produce uh, within certain uh, area. Uh, so okay, just now you also mentioned about that it's not just about flying drone, but it's about identification of the crop and um, for uh, certain dedicated uh, question or issues that you need to resolve. Uh, so do you have a different section or different department other than those who fly the drone and the, those, uh, the other section who actually analyze the issue and how to solve the problem? Yeah, def definitely, definitely. Actually, as I mentioned in my presentation, right, what, what we do, we, we are a DTQ company, right? Uh, mm -hmm. The first DT is drone tech, uh, or TD in, um, uh, in BM, yeah. technology drone. <laughs> but in the second one is data yeah. technology. It's either DT or TD, it's the same, data technology, right? I so this, this is where we gain the interest, this is where we gain the, 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 the deep knowledge about your farm, about your crop. You know, uh, amazing things can be done uh, by using all of this AI-driven kind of uh, analytics. So we, we do sensor fusion. You have real-time data that come from IoT sensors uh, on the field that gives you uh, real-time uh, uh, information like humidity, you know, uh, all, all kind of data. I mean, it depends on, on your crop, right? Uh, but at the same time, uh, it's almost like uh, if human, if, if you have problem with your chest, you go and see a radiologist and they will have you give you an x-ray so that you can peer inside your chest and see what's wrong, right? And yeah. likewise, you can do the same to individual trees, to individual crop. So imagine this, right? Imagine this, that being able to have that, that kind of uh, detailed information uh, and where you treat your farm like a digital factory. So you have all of this real-time information that will enable you to continuously uh, operate and make decisions based on not by guesswork but with real data. Yeah. 
Right. So, so you, you also mentioned, yeah. yeah. You also yeah. mentioned just now that two years ago you have all these issues brought up by your client about the uh, the farming in Australia. I noticed mm. that you mentioned two years ago, but in mm. Malaysia, the ad- adoption of uh, drone technology in agriculture maybe just uh, recently, just about one year mm. ago. Uh, so at the moment, okay, since that uh, obviously they probably adopted this technology earlier. How's the growth comparing? Malaysia adoption of this technology and uh, the foreign country in adoption of this technology. Right. right. To, to be honest with you, I'm very impressed uh, with the adoption in, in Malaysia now. You know, uh, in, in the beginning, when we started seven years ago, it was different. You know? uh, but, but now, of course, uh, the, 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 the industry is very visible. You know? uh, everyone is talking about drones and, and, and this is a very positive thing. You know, we have various government agencies, ministers are talking about drones, everyone is talking about drones. So that, that creates the awareness, the curiosity. So because yeah. of that, the, uh, you know, the, the growth has been amazing uh, in Malaysia. You know, uh, we, we operate uh, in 35 countries right now, but guess what? Half of our revenue come from Malaysia today. Half. Yeah. Right. How? I, I think. What did you say? <laughs> I think the, the, the growth accelerated. One of the reasons is because Aerodyne is based in Malaysia. Okay. I think that is a, a very important factor that okay, I think um, it's good that the government giving a lot of support for the growth of this technology as well. I have another question here. Okay, uh, This question is that, is there any possibility to use other advanced digital technology, uh, AI, artificial technology and big data analytics um, uh, for predictive modeling? to improve productivity specifically to improve performance of supply chain for growth food? Mm. Actually, we are already doing that. <laughs> we, we are already doing that right now uh, for, for various uh, use cases. You know, uh, I'll give you one, one example, uh, disease monitoring and prediction. So we are already using AI technology to do that. So uh, we do mapping, we, we already created an AI model to, to detect uh, early stage of disease and we monitor them over time. So it, it, it's already happening. Uh, there, are, there are people who are talking about Ganoderma issue, there are people talking about uh, uh, the, the, the spread of uh, rhinoceros beetle. Uh, you know, it, it, it is being used, it is, it is happening right now. Yeah. Another question here, okay, I'm not sure whether how uh, you, you can help in this, okay, to answer this one. To increase the productivity, support by improving the quality yield plus supply the quality of seeds. Okay, mm-hmm. Farmer at ground level facing these challenges uh, currently due to good quality of the seeds in uh, its less supply of. Perhaps with this technology, i.e. drone will help the farmer at ground level. I'm, I'm not sure how basically the, uh, this uh, data analytic probably can help to produce a good six for the farmers. Mm-hmm. Oh, there, there's a lot of that actually happening yeah. now. Uh, even even the, the Malaysian Nuclear Agency come up with a better seed as well, <laughs> rice seed. And at the same time, UPM, UKM, they all have all these uh, 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 better seed coming out soon. Some of it is already out as well. So, so we should all be very excited about this. You know, we are, we are looking at improving yield. If, even, uh, let, me, let me show you one thing, you know, one of the biggest uh, trend, uh, a technological trend that's going to happen in the near future, and I won't be surprised uh, mm-hmm. if, if this is going to happen for, for our uh, paddy plantation as well, is mm-hmm. actually self-fertilizing uh, crop. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, right. So right now we, we, we spend a lot of effort to, to fertilize, yeah, to fertilize. The, crop, yeah. to fertilize the crop. So now through genetic uh, engineering, we're also looking at already how you can actually allow the, the crop to actually take nitrogen from the air, for example, which is, already, mm-hmm. which is also already uh, in, ab- in abundance. I mean, genetic engineering is not uh, something new. When we, when we uh, eat banana every morning, these are all GMO, genetically modified. modified. Uh, and, <laughs> Yeah, genetically modified banana, right? So, so this is this is the next one of the next big trend uh, of, of the next five years. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but of course, I mean, we, we can look forward to that. But right now, there are other ways that we can we can do it as well. But that that's one of the I, I just read about this a couple of days ago. So I thought, wow, I mean, that, that is just very very exciting. <laughs> okay, let let's go back to the uh, question from farmers. Okay, so this question is: Is there any uh, plan in future? For Aerodyne to collaborate with Pertubuhan Peladang, introducing mm-hmm. the drone usage in agriculture, 
does the application of drone and with uh, IT uh, needed a high connectivity because rural area per se having internet connectivity problem. How Aerodyne ensure the security of drone itself uh, if they are being put in the nest? So I think there are three, three questions here. I think it's very relevant question, the number two question. Because sure. drone actually uh, need uh, communication, they need the infrastructure, which is internet. But sometimes the, the 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 farm is very big, very large, and then maybe they have a connectivity issue. So sure. how do we tackle this problem? Right, let, me, let me answer the first question first in terms yes. of collaboration. We are always open for collaboration. You know, next week our team is going to Sarawak. Last week we were in Sabah. We, we are really, really looking uh, for, for this. I mean, anybody who wants to collaborate, just drop me a line. You know, we are, we are very excited. For, for us, of course, we are entrepreneurs, but our bigger value is really about you know, solving the problem in Malaysia. I mean, we want to see the adoptions of technology. So, I mean, we want to see that uh, farmers are empowered, uh, you know, uh, not just uh, economically uh, empowered in terms of getting better yield, better results and all that, right? I mean, I mean that, that, so the short answer to that, yes. You know, we want to uh, collaborate with the uh, uh, Persatuan uh, uh, Pelajar. Okay, uh, so you mean that farmer association at any time Aerodyne is open, yeah. just drop a line yeah, yeah. through email or you can visit the Aerodyne website. Uh, yes, and, uh, it's open for any talk. Yeah, we, 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 are, we, are, we, are, we are open to do this. And uh, question number two regarding, regarding uh, connectivity. Right? Yeah. So, so to me, my, my take uh, as in uh, adopting any technology whatsoever, if we are going to wait for everything to be ready, we'll be waiting forever. Right? So that's why uh, when it comes to adopting this technology right now, we do it without, for example, without the NAS first. So we can send the crew to be to be doing it uh, uh, manually over there, right? So we, we do not have to wait for everything to be in place. But the good news is that through government initiative, Jandela, within next year also, we would be looking at 100% coverage in terms of 4G in Malaysia. Mm. To me, that's, that's very exciting news. Mm -hmm. uh, this also happened hand in glove together with the 5G launch which is happening in December as well, right? So one of the conditions for 5G to happen is that through the Jandela program is that nationwide populated area, of course, you won't get connection maybe uh, in the deep jungle or on, on Gunung Tahan, maybe not lah. I don't know, maybe but, I don't know. <laughs> but there is the question because sometimes the farm, for, for example, like uh, Canberra Highland or in uh, Lodging, which is very big farm, area, hundred of acres. So this is where uh, probably they want the service, but there is a connectivity issue. So. No, but, but to me, that, that's another business opportunity. In fact, I, I was talking to uh, my colleague in Germany last night right, yeah. about the exact same thing. This is, this is a global problem, not just a Malaysian problem. So one of the new uh, solutions that will be coming to the market in the future is actually connectivity as a service. So imagine you mentioned lodging just now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Lodging would need to have this kind of connectivity. So there will be service provider that will also then provide connectivity also into this. Right. And this is and this is actually a very very big uh, problem statement globally as well. So I, I I won't be surprised. I mean, when there's a problem, there will be some enterprising company who would want to come and provide solutions to that. So I'm feeling very positive about this as well. But in, uh, in fact. It may Sorry. not be the conventional um, uh, tower, but it can be uh, maybe a satellite-assisted uh, uh, communication. Or... Yeah, okay. and, and Starlink, Starlink is going to have a global global reach very soon as well. So uh, competition is good. Yes, Starlink within within one year, it will come to Malaysia, for example. So the, the third question just now by the same uh, participant is that, what about the security of the nested hmm. process? Oh, yeah. right, sure. Yeah. Right, right. Of course, uh, data security, uh, uh, data security, security of the asset is always a yeah, very, very important consideration uh, yeah. by, by anyone, right? Uh, so of course, uh, employ the most uh, uh, secure kind of connections and all that. But what about uh, uh, hard security? For example, people use uh, anti-drone system and all that, right? So there are always uh, counter technology to all of that. So for example, in our, uh, but of course, we don't do this uh, everywhere. It depends on the seriousness. You know, you, you have to look at the cost and, and uh, you know, cost-benefit uh, analysis, so to speak. 
you know uh, you can have anti drone i mean some people use anti drone to go to go against you but you can also have an anti anti drone system right? so that their drone system will not be effective uh, against your nest you know so so that 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 could be that could be uh, one, one one strategy uh, and of course even today the communications of this drone are highly highly secure as well and data in terms of data security clients own the data always period no 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 negotiation here you know so whatever we do the client have full control of their data you know uh, operators like us, a solution provider like us and they their technology to ensure this as well uh, to not just ensure this uh, from a technology point of view but ensure this from from comfort point of view as well because the the farm owner the would have the key uh, and they they are the only one with the key and nobody else uh, that have this digital key can access their data for example right so that will give them the comfort that hey i'm in control of my data for example but the data storage will be i mean the uh, the data will be stored at your facility but they have the direct no. access to the data no uh, the data uh, are normally not at our facility uh, data is on the cloud <laughs> in the cloud but uh, you you are the I mean, uh, the custodian of the data, but the owner is still your client. Yeah, the yeah. owner is the client. Yes, that's right. Okay. So let me read to you one of the questions that was sent earlier. This is about GIS. So how extensive is geographic information uh, system, GIS technology adopted in mm -hmm. uh, for Malaysia agriculture sector? Deeply rooted, deeply, deeply rooted, <laughs> you know. So, so uh, we, we use GIS uh, uh, for every aspect of the precision agriculture, basically. It's layers upon layers on the map, uh, and then we use various indices and, and AI technology to actually do all kinds of things upon the, uh, on the layer of the G, uh, GIS data. So it's very, very uh, deeply rooted <laughs> in this technology. There is another question also that uh, was sent earlier. This one is related to COVID-19. So mm -hmm. the question is that the application of artificial uh, intelligence technology for agri-food supply chain during the COVID-19, how does it uh, improve or help to improve the situation that affected the supply chain during right. the, the pandemic? Right. Uh, 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 honest answer uh, to that is not much in the past. Right. Uh, I, I mean, COVID-19 uh, disrupt uh, logistics. A, a lot of people couldn't, couldn't travel, even, even for us as well. We have clients that wanted to operate. We, we couldn't travel because of the lockdown and all that. Um, so so uh, in terms of uh, having an impact, um, I would say not yet, uh, other than from the other angle of using uh, this technology to control the spread of COVID-19. That, that's about the only, and I, I want to be honest about this one, you know, I, I can, <laughs> I can uh, uh, tell the mistruth, but at the moment, no, not, not yet. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah, but, but the potential is there, yeah. potential is there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there are, okay, there are also questions in the chat box under the Q&A, so I will read one of the questions from, this one is from uh, Dr. Muhammad No Jayadi, uh, this is also uh, from MPC, Dr. Jayadi. Oh, yes. So, in promoting drone technology to improve productivity in agri sector, what are the regulatory challenges that Aerodyne experienced throughout your involvement in this sector? Since that, my question is, oh, okay, I think we have discussed uh, yeah, yeah, about, yeah. Yeah, about the uh, regulation in a flying drone and so on. Okay, um, one more question that we received earlier is about affordability of this technology. Okay, um, do you, do you, can, can you maybe just give some estimate or guesstimate that how far from today or how long from today that this technology will be uh, likely to be very affordable to most of the farmers? Mm -hmm. I think on the contrary, I think it's already affordable today. When, we, when they talk about not being affordable, perhaps they talk about cash, right? Because you, you need cash to acquire the technology. But it is affordable when you look from the cost-benefit point of view. So you, you look at it this way, right? You, you yep. need an outlay, capital outlay to buy it. You think, oh, it's expensive, right? But yep. when you look at the cost savings, when you look at the productivity that, 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 that you gain out of this, the, the result is, is there. So in terms of that affordability, uh, to me, it's not a valid concern, I see. unless you are talking about cash flow point of view, right? Mm -hmm. So, so that, that's also why people like us come into the picture. We, we are telling you, hey, you do not need to buy. 
So yeah. there's, there's no KPEC. You do not need to spend 30,000, 40,000, 50,000, 70,000. You do not need to spend. You only pay the same thing that you pay your, your foreign worker to do the spray. You come to us, we can, we can do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah. I yeah. was about to, to try to, um, to do a comparison that when you bring the foreign worker, you need to pay for the permit and it's not it's cheap not. now. It's it's cheap. Not, it's yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think for three or four foreign worker, you can buy one drone, maybe 20, 30,000 only to get it's just the permit, not the... Oh but but that's, that's the legal legal for you. There's a lot of the non-legal. Yeah. <laughs> of, of course, of course, the legal one. Yeah, yeah. And that's only for the permit. You're not talking about the monthly that you have to pay them. So that I think... Housing, the medical, uh, the, the social issue, there's a lot of costs yeah. that goes to that. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's good that um, Aerodyne can provide the service that not necessarily the farmer must buy or acquire the drone itself or, or the technology itself. So maybe this is how that maybe for the start, for the uh, beginning that the farmer can look into uh, subscribing to the service that can be provided by Aerodyne. Uh, so mm -hmm. I think uh, it is important that uh, maybe many of the farmers out there stay do not realize that Aerodyne is uh, providing this service uh, for the, the farm. So um, I would like to ask your experience. Uh, when uh, you are providing this service um, in foreign country, overseas, how was the acceptance? Okay, especially when you are venturing into the new market, a new uh, country, how's the acceptance level in terms of uh, adopting drone technology in agriculture? It, it varies from country to country. Some countries are very, very fast. Australia, very progressive, for example. Uh, uh, Middle East also very fast, you know, uh, so it's it different uh, depending on country by country. Some are very, very difficult <laughs> to move, to progress, uh, some are faster, so it, it, everything sort of uh, balance out. And, and for many, many different uh, reasons, uh, some of them uh, regulation, regulation issue, uh, some of them uh, it, it's, uh, it's more of uh, uh, I would say uh, risk averseness or, or other technology averseness. There are also region where, you know, yeah, we have a system that is working already. You know, why do something else? Yeah, you say you can save ten percent, but why why change it? We, we have that uh, that kind of a challenge uh, as well. Uh, but we're also seeing that things have changed a little bit now. Uh, now there's a, a lot of uh, positivity. Hence, that explain why the industry is growing by uh, fifty percent kega uh, every year. So so I think the adoption is getting better and better. I have this uh, question, which is uh, I myself interested to know. Okay, it's a very good question from Encik Asmi Abdul Aziz. Can this drone technology be used to monitor crops uh, grown under rain shelter, like the one that we have in Cameron Highlands? Mm. And under what? Under rain shelter? Uh, under shelter. So it means that. Under like, shelter. Oh, okay. Under the shelter. Under the shelter. So it means that, uh, or, or maybe you have like the indoor version that you can fly mm -hmm. under the shelter, or if uh, the drone fly above the shelter, mm -hmm. will it stay able to detect or right. to analyze the crop? Right, right. right. Sure. Uh, there are drones that can fly autonomously under shelter. There are, there are, there are technology available. Uh, depending on the use case, then we need to look at the feasibility of it right now. So my answer is 50-50. It depends. At the moment, the economies of scale, the technology maturity is not there yet. Uh, I guess we need to look at how serious is the problem statement here. Uh, if it is under shelter, if you're talking about, about doing pesticide, perhaps you just wire them, right? I mean, we pipe, piped it or something like that, right? It could be that as well. Because to me, uh, we are not about pushing drone as a, a solution for everything, you know? But, but, but if it's really a very, very large area, maybe we can use, uh, uh, you know, um, and, and then ground vehicles, UGP, yeah. you can use UGP as well. UGP, so it's not yeah. really, yeah, it's not really just uh, just limited to drone. But the answer to the question, yes, there are drones that can fly under shelter. There are drones that can already do sense and avoid. You know, mm. you can actually go around trees as well and, and, and all that. I so see. again, uh, again, we, we, we look at the requirement, the feasibility and all that. If it is feasible, we can, we can develop a solution. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, there is another question from uh, Professor Ikechi Agbuba. Is there a way GIS and other uh, Industry 4.0 provisions will be subsidized for developing countries? Okay, I am not sure if you can respond to that. So basically, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, actually, I, I can, right? Because I, I, I do know that there are 
countries that are actually subsidizing this. They also Okay, sorry for the technical problem. So we waiting uh, Encik Kamaro for join in back our session. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Prof. Fatima. I thought that uh, I have a problem on my side. I think maybe the connectivity issue is from uh, uh, from uh, Encik Kamaro. So we will call Mr. Kamaro to uh, to rejoin. Okay, the conversation. But meanwhile, I think uh, if you have any uh, any more question, you can continue to type in the Q and A. But in case if we are not able uh, to uh, be connected with Encik Kamaro, we can take your question. Then maybe we we will communicate with Encik uh, Kamaro through uh, the online. Uh, although that we scheduled to finish at uh, 4 p.m., which is already 4 p.m., I hope that we are able to bring Encik Kamaro back. I think there's still a lot more interesting question. And uh, listening to his uh, explanation is also very exciting. We can see how that uh, he also managed to, to develop the company uh, from a three-person company in 2014 and until today. Uh, they have um, the offices in 35 countries all over the world. Uh, so, okay, um, and uh, I, I also like to uh, to thank MPC for providing uh, this opportunity uh, to have a direct explanation uh, from uh, Aerodyne, uh, the founder and CEO himself. Okay, um, Juan Fatima, you just uh, let me know if you can if you can uh, communicate with uh, Che Camaro in the background if he is able to join back the conversation okay uh chikamaru will join so okay um, good yeah, if give him uh two minutes Dato. okay thank you very much so very good so that uh we will uh have him back okay okay that that is very good Okay, meanwhile, I will see um, all the questions that we receive here. Okay, uh, so we have answered both of, most of the uh, question, but we still have the question in the chat box and we also received uh, the question earlier uh, that Sam, I think we have about three or four more questions that uh, asked um, earlier. Okay, so, so we will hope. Okay, so uh, please uh, bear with us. We know that although that we have uh, all this uh, technology, but sometimes it happens, especially under uh, this uh, weather uh, condition. I think it's raining around my area. It's raining very heavily. Uh, so mm -hmm. apologize if there is any delay or this uh, connection during the, the discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay, why um, why uh, we are trying to get back to Cik Kamaro? Ah, Cik Kamaro is back here. Yeah. Okay, welcome back, uh, Cik Kamaro. Can you hear me? Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah, the line, line uh, disconnected. Uh, yeah, I, it is raining around here at my place. I'm not sure at the Aerodyne campus. Is it raining or not? Sometimes when it's raining, there's some disruption to the connectivity as well. But it's good that you can have us back. Um, we thought that uh, at four o'clock uh, we we have to stop, but I think there's a lot more question. If you can spend maybe fifteen more minutes uh, to answer some of the question, we have received a question uh, earlier, uh, which is about uh, how uh, discussion is how digital technology can help farmers uh, with the rising of uh, fertilizers and pesticide prices. Mm -hmm. uh, so will this uh, technology, the advanced technology, new technology will help to make it more efficient so that probably they need, they can use less yes, or, yeah. or they can get it cheaper. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, that, that uh, is actually what we discussed earlier as well. We can actually even end up using less fertilizer 
yeah. uh, because we do uh, targeted uh, application, right? So, so yeah, so definitely, I, I think there's a clear use case, uh, proven clear use case for that. And another question, how can we manage to change from traditional to digital technology, especially during the pandemic with a lot of loss uh, from farmers? Mm -hmm. I think uh, it's not just loss in terms of uh, the produce and income. I think the other one is that the loss of the resources or human resource. Mm -hmm. I think the younger generation, they are not that interested uh, to be involved in agriculture. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think they are more uh, to other form of uh, businesses or activities. So how actually this technology actually uh, can uh, encourage uh, the young people to be involved in agriculture, like what you mentioned that uh, the capability to do reverse migration uh, to rural area. Yeah, yeah, de definitely. So I, I think right now the, the youngsters would not want to work in this because they, they deem it as dirty, dangerous, demeaning even. I mean, it's not, you know, high tech, right? <laughs> uh, you yeah. know, why you want to work in the hot sun and all that, right? So I think adopt, uh, technology will change this, uh, this um, mindset altogether, you know, uh, because suddenly this is modern, this is the in thing. I mean, youngsters can use iPad, can, can, can see, it's like them playing game, you know, on their iPad, they can see prediction, they can see graph of, you know, the utilization, where it's heading and all that. And it's not just for fun, it's not just for, you know, for the look of it. it it's really modern farming, you know, and don't, don't forget, I mean, if you look at Netherlands, the smallest city in Europe is the world's largest exporter, one of the world's largest exporter of, of food, for example. They're even the world's largest exporter of orchid. Can you imagine? Oh. Mm -hmm. The whole largest exporter of orchid come from, from Netherlands, right? All of this happened because of technology. So if, if we adopt technology, uh, you know, it's actually a very, very lucrative uh, industry. Yeah, and and uh, the youngsters will get excited about this, right? You know, we, we tell them, we should tell them, you know, this is not dirty anymore. It's not dangerous. Yeah. This, is, this is high tech. This this is this is advanced. <laughs> you know, this is exciting. Right. In fact, we can tell that this is your things, youngster. This is your things. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. you should come uh, to to participate. Uh, one more question. Okay, how efficient does the drone technology compare to the conventional method? in terms of uh, agriculture, is there any reliable research on this example, how many percent it can reduce mm -hmm. the operation costs? Mm -hmm. We do, we do have, we, we have done this benchmark ourselves. Uh, we are also working with various universities as well, because we do not want this to just be an aerodyne, aerodyne. At the end of the day, it could be a, a you know, a, a, a paper, you know, uh, that is a, a research that is done by a university as well. But it's not a new thing, it's, 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 it's proven. Uh, and you know, all you need to do is uh, search for precision agriculture. The, the answers are there. You know, uh, when, when it's not delivering real value, uh, maybe because it's only because it's a new crop or, you know, uh, the, the, uh, the, the execution issues and all that. But in terms of uh, uh, the, 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 the provenness, whether or not this is the solution, this is it, this, this is the way we do things. Okay. Um... I, I believe that earlier you have already mentioned uh, about the subsidy in uh, this technology, but uh, uh, Professor Ikechi Abukba uh, stay uh, want to know more. Is there is there any specific uh, um, subsidy or grant uh, for the usage of uh, GIS? Okay, for the production of GIS. I, 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 in Malaysia, yeah. In Malaysia. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I don't have that information. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, let, let's go to the question that we received uh, earlier. Okay. What are the main challenges in implement, implementing digital technology in agriculture? Uh, so I, I believe this is a general, uh, general question that uh, maybe you have, un you have answered earlier. Uh, so, unless if you have anything else to, to add to it? Well, I, I think adoption is really, uh, uh, the, the challenge is really adoption, right? I mean, the yeah. adoption challenge is that if you're talking about Malaysia, you know, it's, it's a highly regulated uh, and yeah. controlled uh, uh, industry. <coughs> okay. So, we need the same kind of commitment uh, from, from the government too now, right? I mean, because this is our way forward, right? Yeah. Talking about 4.0 industry form as well. Right? This is the future. We're talking about the digital. And I do know that the government is very serious about this. 
So the rollout is coming. So at the end of the day, we will see uh, uh, various incentives, uh, various uh, uh, approach, uh, uh, um, just like, for example, Persatuan Peladang. If, if yep. individual farmers, smallholders were to adopt technology, maybe it will become very prohibitive. But yep. what if one Persatuan Peladang yep. work together today? We, we can significantly uh, uh, optimize uh, the cost because you are, you, are, you are sharing, for example, right? So, so I, 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 th I think I think Malaysia is heading in the right direction uh, through the my digital initiatives and through yes. you know various activities that's happening right now. So yeah. I, th I think we have something exciting to look forward to. Yeah, I think uh, even MDEC also play very significant roles in ensuring the increase in terms of uh, adopt adoption of uh, technology. Yes, uh, yes. There's one question here from Mustafa Dakian say that the drone technology that offered by your company is developed by Malaysian expert or outsourcing from abroad? Mm -hmm. all, all, all the data technology is 100% done by us, by, by Malaysian experts. Mm -hmm. right? uh, in terms of drone itself, uh, we have a different philosophy with some people. For us, we do not feel that it's worth us reinventing the wheel. You know, we, we only reinvent or we only produce our drone when it's necessary. You know, um, otherwise, there are good drones and cheap drones out there that we can use. So if you were to look at the aviation industry, they are the Air Boeing and Airbus of the world that produce the aircraft, then they are the airliner that actually buy those, those aircraft from Boeing and Airbus. Then we have Malaysia Airlines, we have Air Asia, we have Qatar, we have Emirates and all that. So we are those, we are the airliners. So we, we don't really build drone unless when it comes, unless when it is necessary, when there's no technology available to solve. Why, why this does not make sense? Because, Mm -hmm. Some of these major players, they already spend billions to build yeah. those technology. So we can't compete. Why, why do you want to go into that? Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Unless you have some really, really key IP that others do not have, then it becomes a me too. Just because other people do it, you want to do the same. Right? <laughs> yes, yeah. correct. Yeah. So it's no, yeah, it's no point competing in the area which is not your niche area. So I think you have a put it in a correct perspective that this is what is your niche is providing the, the service rather than inventing the drone or selling the drone. But so, data is important. Data is all that matters here. It's not really the drone. Drone is really the, just the mechanization part, right? Yes. That's why we focus on the data. The data, okay. So I think, uh, of course, uh, we have a lot of questions here, but I think uh, we are not able to go through one by one here, okay? But uh, I think this is a very important introduction. Uh, especially about this data technology, of course, uh, in uh, modernizing uh, the farming and the agriculture business. Uh, so I would like to, uh, to apologize if there is any issue. We have a small hiccup in terms of connectivity just now, but uh, Alhamdulillah, we managed to get uh, uh, connected again. And uh, thanks to uh, Mr. Kamaru also uh, uh, that uh, put all effort to join back the session so that he's here to answer the question. You remember what he mentioned just now that he will always be ready, okay, that if you have any uh, proposal or any collaboration that need to be done, you can always drop him a line. Uh, maybe you can visit Aerodyne website. Uh, there are a lot of information inside there as well. Uh, so, uh, Cik Kamaru, I think any last word before we end the discussion? Yeah, yeah. I, I think that the future is digital. You know, uh, if we don't do this, if we don't uh, adopt this technology, we'll be left behind. So this is not really an option. This is something that we should all be focused on increasing our productivity, our cost, uh, optimize our cost, increase our yield. This is something that we need to do. So I say, uh, let, let's do this. Let's, let's work together, uh, make that, make that uh, difficult decision. Sometimes people are just comfortable with what they have. I suggest let's just do this. You know, we may, I mean, most of the time, 99% of the time, we, we experience immediate uh, value creation. If it doesn't trust the system, trust the technology, you will get better results out of this. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you to all the participants. Thank you to uh, Jack Kamaru also. I think we have, uh, we have limited time for this session, but it's very informative, very well. Uh, session. So I also wish to congratulate Aerodyne, the whole Aerodyne staff uh, team uh, for being number one in the world at the moment in the drone technology. Uh, so congratulations and you also make all of us proud. As mentioned, we are proud that uh, the number one drone technology in the world 
is based in the Malaysia. So with that, I would like to say thank you very much. So I will hand over the session back to Puan Fatima. Okay, thank you Dato uh, for your for moderate this session and thank you Cik Kamarul for your sharing. Okay, before we end the webinar, I would like to ask uh, participants uh, cooperation to complete the assessment form uh, through the link given in the chat box. This is for uh, our future improvement. Uh, video, recording uh, video recording and slide presentation, uh, e-certification for this uh, webinar will be emailed Sorry, to all participants. Okay, last on behalf uh, of Malaysia Productivity Corporation. Okay, last on behalf of uh, Malaysia Productivity Corporation, we would, uh, would like to invite you to join Persidangan Amalan Baik Peraturan that will be held tomorrow, 25 November 2021 at 8.30 a.m. This conference will be launched by our Prime Minister Yang Amat Berhormat, Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri bin Yaakob. The detail of this conference is provided in the chat box. Once again, thank you to all participants for your time and we hope to meet you in our future webinar. Assalamualaikum and thank you very much. Waalaikum salam, so thank you. Okay, thank you very much.